joking apart, down there, literally after sort of fat, in fact, you can see them already. There's, see, there's bubbles coming up already. Mm. So we know there's fish there. I mean, we knew it anyway, because it looked pretty solid, yeah, to be looked fair. Good. Um, but what I'll do is I say, as soon as I get over there, I'm going to start loose feeding that. And it's so important that you do. Um, where anglers are go wrong is they're just leaving it far too long, you know, in between feeds. Yeah. You've got to keep it going in. You've got to get them up in the first place, haven't you, competing? C certainly for shallow fishing, mate. You've so got to they're micros that you fed as well. You're fed a non selective bait, so they will get mopped up by everything at least. Everything's it's not sweet. like you're fed something nasty that's going to sit on the bottom, isn't it? It's going to disappear quite quick. Nothing's nasty, Jay. How dare you? You could no. have fed like eight mils or. Don't tempt me. <laughs> mate, that's even longer breakdown. I might get even more. Be there for be days. <laughs> So, starting off right. wise, we've got the little fruit shoot pot on, obviously with the holes in, we're going to sneak the bait in, fill that up, and we've got a formerly expander. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, I know, you know, one of them, it's hard pellets, but what I've found on here, the hard pellets, they, they don't really work as well, and obviously we, it, we're fishing this, how I'd fish it in a match. Yeah. Um, it might be that, you know, we're getting sort of like little tiny skimmers to start with, but generally if that's a problem, I'll put a bigger pot on and try and get some bigger fish in, and then yeah. I'll just go closer to the bank. Yeah, do you find it? When you've got a depth like this, when it's a very gradual slope, you do yeah. seem to find the depth like that is it's catching odd silver fish in this depth right now. Yeah. But the shallower you get, it's sort of dangerous for them, isn't it? Because the be. big the herons will eat them. That if absolutely. They go too shallow. Definitely. Uh, no, it's a massive thing that. Uh, right. So bait's going in. Leave it sort of five or six seconds. That's come out. Pull back to my marker. Lift the rig up. Get it straight in. Now, whilst that's in, what I'm going to do? I'm going to start feeding that swim there with the casters. Every thought of 30 seconds to a minute, I want to be feeding them. We can see them the shallow there already, Jay. Mm. You see that little dink then? So if I miss a bite, well, we don't miss proper bites, do we, Jay? The liners. <laughs> I'm going to come back, lay it in again. So already on, you know, I, I want to know where I'm fishing in the right depth. We'll, we'll know if we're not, because we'll start getting fish like that. Yeah. No, it's joking apart. If we, if we get sort of two, three, four of them, one after another, then it's time to, to change something. Now, whether that be, you know, put more bait in. It's up right in the top lip, though, Just you know bang on, I mean? mate, that Perfect. should be. Yeah. Not putting that in the net. Uh, so it might be that we, we need to put a bigger pot on, uh, put more feed in, or we just need to go and chase them into the shallow water. Yeah. But as I said before, I'm, I'm not bothered about catching these, these small fish to start with. It could go in now and catch a big F1 or a carp. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of it, isn't it? Yeah, it'll be interesting. With Fuming, Rick zoomed you? in, you might see it clouded <laughs> up a little bit, see if there are any carp there maybe with it. Too. Definitely. Uh, and it's this stage now, getting into rhythm, <laughs> just before you ship out, put some bait in. Are you two taking mick out of me? No, we were, asking, we were asking if they were swirling. Oh, is there any there? Is there any there? No. All oh, right, I'm doing it wrong. Should we go on another peg? Not there yet. So again, nice and easy, get onto your marker, inch past it, feed in first, right on my stone. I think I'm on the right stone, there's three there. <laughs> Back to my marker, lift the rig up and in. When they're having it proper, it's going to go as you're feeding. So you see there? Mm, that's on. Shit back. straight in on that yeah. feed, don't you then? Yeah, it's basically like your method feeder fishing. Mm. So that's the case in point then. We've had that little skimmer to start with. We've gone in. I said we'd possibly catch a carp or an F1, and we have done straight away. Yeah. Now, what is important is obviously elastic choice, isn't it, Jay? You're a massive fan of using light elastic. Yeah, I like aren't fishing you? quite light for, for this style where you're catching everything, yeah. Um, so this is only, it's a map twin core 5 to 8, so it's nice and light. Don't want to be giving them fish loads of beans. And what I'm not bothered about, you see where that fish is now, it's right over where I'm loose feeding my casters, or yeah. casters if you're from down south. Casters? Doesn't make a blind mm. bit of difference, does it? No. Fish are used to fish swimming through one another this time, yeah. this time of uh, a year when it's a bit warmer. So, I know you'd be on like 12 pools, but he'd probably only your fifth fish by now anyway, <laughs> wouldn't you actually? So we'll see where this is. What is this? Is it? He's one of my boys, he's a foot one, isn't he? Is it, is it a f one? I'm pretty can't sure catch you can't, can you? I was going to scoop him then, mate. I was, I was going to scoop him. So all the while, while I'm playing this fish, I'm not going to pull on it. I'm going to be loose feeding these casters, keeping mm. that bait going in. Now already, I'd be thinking about going on that. What's <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> I, joking apart, I think you've got to leave it probably an hour before you go on something. Would you go that long? Even with yeah. I, do you take a risk of going for that long? Yeah, if I'm catching like, if, if we're catching these, because obviously it's sort of like, it's one and a half to two hours for one of these F1s in here. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, yeah. re the real chunky fish. It might might only look like uh, ten ounce, but really it's sort of like two yeah, pound. Yeah, you've, you've got <laughs> you know what I mean? The they're um, they're a good sort of chunky chunky sized stump fish then. Mm. Um, so 
I just want to leave it as long as possible there, basically. I don't want to go on them too early because I think it ruins it for later on. Yeah. But, but if, all the time. If you were struggling, if you'd gone 20 minutes without getting a bite or catching very little across, yeah. would you take the would you have a little look on it then maybe if you saw if signs? I, yeah, if I, if I saw them swirling or, you know, blowing anything, this, that and the other, then yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's worth a quick it, look. But I think you, you touched on it this morning with, I think you have to be careful with Ide in particular. Because yeah. I think I don't think it's that they feed and then stop feeding. It's I think they gorge themselves. They just like nail. They're like chub, aren't they? Yeah, they just eat and eat and eat and eat, don't they? So if you feed them for too long and there's not a lot there, I reckon we could be eyed, Jay. We'd definitely be eyed. You know what I mean? Yeah. So again, and it's just getting into the rhythm like we're doing now, isn't it? So that, that bait's in. Oh, a little liner then. A little knock. I'll put some more casters in. Let's say if we miss a bite, come back, lay it in again. Another, another little tiny fish, I think that one. Come back nice and quick, get some casters in. So you just get into rhythm all the time. Yeah. That's all we're doing. Now, it's one of the things about sort of commercials this time of year, all sort of like last year's fry, they're all gonna, mm -hmm. you know. Ready to eat. Bloom mm -hmm. and they don't get a look in, do they all, all that time and they're just, they're just on it. But, as I said, you've seen it, you saw it before, it might be this time we go in and we catch another F1. It's one of them things you put up with, but, what we can't do is go on, as I said, this shallow swim too early. No. So if I'm getting bites over there, then I'm, I'm more than happy with that. I know, I know now I'm proper confident because I know there's fish down that middle. So mm. We can see them swirling. Yeah, you've got another option if needed, haven't you? Definitely. Would you ever go like selective on your hook bait? If, if you're catching too many little fish on this, Yeah. would you swap your hook bait or would you just swap depth? Definitely, mate. I mean, I, the other thing I'd do, obviously, corn, you know, bigger meat or... Even a bigger expander to, to some extent. Yeah. Uh, I'd definitely try that. Um, but usually it, it, it's depths. Depths is the one, isn't it? Yeah, that, you know, that taking a bit definitely of, fixes things quicker, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Because usually when you go into that shallow water, that's where you're going to get the bigger fish. And obviously there. Again, see, so we've had that little yeah. skimmer, put it in, and we've got another, a better fish. So just ship back nice and quick. First thing I like to do when I ship back is get some casters in. Mm. Then I'll so start you're feeding back. that really regularly, aren't you? You're feeding I'm five or six times a cast. You're feeling a lot heavier than I would, yeah. It's just, I don't want anyone else nicking them fish. I know what eyes are like, and mm. it's eyes that predominantly I'm going for. We'll probably you, go on and catch a carp and Go with thingy as well, casters always in preference to maggots. Oh, 100%, Jay. Just um, for the noise and the that. Noise, I mean, I might not always, as I say, I'm, I'm geared up today to fish banded caster. Yeah. But, yeah, I love fishing. Certainly when it's bright, um, white maggot, Jay. I don't think you can beat a white maggot. Yeah, like a, a maggot now and again as well. Oh, mate, yeah. you know, the way, uh, the way obviously you've talked through hooking, you know, the maggot through the side and that makes yeah. a massive difference. Where's he up, Jay? Bang on, mate. That's where, they should be. That's where we want them, mate, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so it's fish like that, they're proper weight builders, aren't they? Mm. You know what I mean? And it's just nice, steady away. But yeah, coming back to that bait choice, Jay, red and white maggots, again, I'll, I'll carry them with me all the time. Mm -hmm. Just gives you that option. Yeah. And even for mugging, you know, how good sort of like three yeah, or four you, white maggots. You talk about that quite a bit, you like a bit of a maggot for your mugging, don't you? Mate, you know what I mean? It's just mm. one of them. They sink just, nice, don't they? Yeah, they do. Just sink nice and slow, and they're the best chub bait in the world, <laughs> and the best eye bait in the world as well. <laughs> but the reason I prefer a caster is just it's it's more durable in that band, I think, a caster, and you just get more noise off the off the slap with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, for for feeding as well. So much more noise, isn't it? Definitely. I'll always always tend to feed um, caster rather than maggot. See, that was a little small fish then coming into it. Mm -hmm. Get some more bait in there. A little dink. To show that so tiny, racing tiny in, aren't dink, they, them, them F1s now. Yeah, the big bow wave there, Jay. Mm. One of your fish there, mate. <laughs> seen you, hasn't he? So we see like there's nothing difficult with what we're doing, is there? No, and no. We, we get this across all the time, don't we? Mm. What we're doing. I mean, it might seem like proper busy, which it is. You know, the, the busier angler, certainly this style of fishing, is going to catch most of the fish. Um, you, you can't just sort of like put some bait in and stay there. You've got to be got to be busy mm -hmm. got to keep it going in that, that amount that you're feeding that little pot yeah by the time you've caught that fish and shit back out there there's no bait no definitely without not. quickly you're getting indications as well it's telling you that your peg's developing in it the, the racing in when you're feeding yeah and the tin that's going to give you a really quick bite when you go in yeah the, the only thing that could happen because of the depth is that you might start getting too quick on it and then they come up but you've got that to fix by going back when you need to, haven't we? Usually, as you'll know through your coaching here, Jay, that's, that's normally what happens. You'll have a good quick run like we're doing now with a dozen or so F1s uh, and then it'll just start going dead iffy and it'll just sort of like, you just get too many in your yeah, peg. It's numbers, isn't it, yeah. And, you know, predominantly a lot of the time, it's not so bad in matches because obviously everyone's competing for them fish. Mm -hmm. uh, but like for, 
for today, like they're just like they're just ravenous, mate. They're going proper nuts. Mm. Always a little bit here, still. <coughs> Might press them a bit hard, Rich. Can you get that in? <laughs> but it's like it's pinpoint accuracy. It's basically like a method feed of fishing, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, you're creating the perfect trap on the bottom, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. No movement at all. I mean, I've stopped all doing that since uh, watching you. What? No lifting and dropping, <laughs> mate. I'm, I used to be a nightmare for lifting and dropping. Mm. But it's not wrong. It's just. I think they pick up on it that it's as not you, natural. As you say though, you, you're dislodging it, aren't you? So yeah, you're moving it off your trap. Yeah. You, you just, in, obviously you've got to be right over it because that's where them fish are coming into. So, little tiny skimmers. If we catch another, set two of them in quick succession, I'm going to change them. I'm going to just go into that shallower water. Um, I think they'll come straight into it. Yeah, I'm I a do. full pot of micros. I'd expect it if, if we weren't having to rush it a bit with the because of the filming. Yeah. If you were to give this another four or five casts, I'd expect to start seeing fish at the back, even though you haven't fed anything. Yeah. It's the, the clever ones seem to sneak at the back, don't they? You just pick off the little morsels. I mean, if, if anything, it's sort of, it's too, it's too nice, that shelf, isn't it, Jay? We want it a bit more Yeah, do it a bit, be a bit severe than what get, it is. Get mm. closer to that banking. Um, but, oh, there's a little tiny fish on there. But yeah, I reckon we'd, we'd be able to cope with going even shallow water. Definitely. Mm. In fact, when we come back, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. Yeah, catch Rich one will more. carry on filming. I'm gonna go in with the uh, the plummet and then we'll knock sort of like eight inches off of that. Or should we just stay in and catch F1s? No, we've got to show it, haven't we, mate? Yeah, we've got to show it. Time to go further back and just see. Cause I think you will. You won't catch any little fish. I think you're just, just gonna catch proper F1s or maybe even a, give yourself best chance of a carp, innit, If you go to the back. Yeah, definitely. Although I, I don't think there's been a carp in your peg yet. I've not seen one. No. We had the one bow way out, that's probably like halfway, wasn't it? Mm. <laughs> I've got a wasp in my arm, I do apologise. <laughs> but this is, I mean, it's proper, just proper nice and nice, steady fishing, isn't it? We're putting fishing in it all the time. Apart from them skimmers, we took them away, mate, don't we? Look at them lot. Oh, mate, I'm going to use your plummet. Oh, yeah. They've you been busy, haven't they? What's that? Wowzers! I'm not going to feed me casters, I'm no, straight don't on it. No, don't feed me casters now, yeah. Not a chance. So I'm going to knock. What we're saying, five or six inches off that. And this is where, ideally, we could do with a shorter up length. Well, like you're a now four inch. Four inch. You know, I'd probably get away with it, but if I was in a match, I'd be on a much shorter up length. I ain't got any tied up, so that's why I'm not putting one on. But, you know, if I'm in sort of like real shallow water, I'd put a two inch up length on. Would you? you know, Just to right be a bit proportional. Nailed. Yeah, definitely. I think mm. it makes a massive difference. So with it, this might be, it just might be a bit too wobbly when it's in place, you know what I mean? Yeah, that just for that real, anything less than sort of 12 inch. I think so, but I might be talking. But, you know, it's, again, it's what works for the angler, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I used to use three inches. I don't tend to use three inches anymore. Do you not? I tend to, to use four? fours or sixes, yeah. Right. Mm. Yeah, I'd probably, probably be tempted to go... Uh, oh, is that a good guess? That's a good guess, wasn't So it? what I'm looking for, I'm not going to fish there, because you see, I've just pulled that. Are you zooming in on that, Rich? You see, I've got that somewhat horrible there, like a big stone or something. Yeah. So that's going to hamper me fishing. don't want to go in there, so I'll just come a little bit more to the left, see what it's like there. A bit cleaner. A bit clearer there, isn't it? Yeah. So I reckon, so I'm going to get my mark on my pole again. So I've knocked, what? Six inches off that rig or something like that, Jay, yeah? Yeah. And you get that perfect just onto that. What, what's that on your pole, six? Is that pretty much a metre further back? Uh, so I was on that joint uh, on my leg, so yeah, it is. It's bang yeah. on a metre. Mm. So you see, it's not, it's just, it's a nice slope, isn't it? We want it more severe than that, but yeah. you know, that's what we got. So I've got my little marker there, which is that green, that green reed, and I've got my mark on my pole. Which I'm happy with, yeah. So we're going to go straight into that, mate, and hopefully we we'll catch some more skimmers. Yeah. <laughs> but all no, the time, I obviously. Will. I think you'll catch a proper fish. Yeah, we have I to think wait so. For bite. so. I think you'd have been better leaving it for a bit longer, wouldn't it? Which is what you would have done. On the oh, match. definitely. Uh, as I say, and this is what we're doing for like your purposes only, you lovely viewers. We want to show yeah. you what would happen if we started getting loads of skimmers, liners, farlockers. You just yeah. go into shallow water, simple as that. Yeah. But you, you've started further off to give yourself that option. Yeah. If you just start at the back, you may can't, have caught nothing. Can't just because they don't want to go you. back there. Mate, yeah, you were on it. Can't teach you now, can we? <laughs> right, so we put them back shots up a bit more because normally I'd be shortening this line as well. Because yeah. once you when she got up, it's very rare you come back down to that original depth, isn't it? Once you got them at that depth. Yeah, yeah. It, coming back, dropping back deeper generally just causes problems, doesn't yeah. it? You just foul up them more. So, I've gone for two pints already, Jane, like seven. 
<laughs> no, but look at that one there. Yeah. You see that swirl there? There's so a we lot know of fish now there, isn't there? There's a hell of a lot of fish there. Mm. Uh, and this is exactly what I'll be doing in a match, as I say. So, we've gone about a metre further over. We're taking six inches off the depth. I'm going to put it in on that. Sneak it in. Come on, come out. Might have pressed that a bit hard, Jay. That's it, he's out. Wait. Come back to your marker, lift it up and in. And that's it, we're fishing. Then all the while, I'm feeding them casters down that middle. Mm. Sure, they do waiting a little bit longer for a bite, aren't we? Yeah, we're gonna, well, there's no initial feed there. I think it doesn't help that we're fishing on the end of Richard's shoelace. Skyline and again, Rich, aren't you? <laughs> but the summit there, it just wobbled a little bit then. Mm. We out, so, hey, a proper fish and a carp left your as well then. So that's exactly what we're on about. That's, yeah. that's what, you know, anglers such as Jay will be doing and thinking about it all the time. Thinking, how can I get these bigger fish and avoid the little ones? Mm. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're getting, like we were doing, we were getting the odd little skimmer and the odd F1 in between them, I'd be happy with that because I knew we'd like, obviously got them down the middle. Yeah. But if them skimmers were a nightmare or small fish were a nightmare, gudging than that, then you'd have to do something. You couldn't yeah. just stay with them, could you? I think for me, it'd depend on what everyone else was catching as well. If it was right. fishing quite poor and they weren't feeding, then I'd stick with it. And I wouldn't jump on that until I needed it. Again, to. it comes down to you like watching everyone, don't you? You know what I mean? Yeah, I like I like a bit of that. Um, I mean, I like watching them, but then, you know what I mean? I just get confused with what I'm doing then, so. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is where I've not done me quick referencing. You see what I mean about that deeper landing there? Yeah, it's right on your rim now, isn't it? So if that was cheeky, yeah. if that was over the rim of that landing there, <laughs> it's good, you're going to be snared in it. Yeah. And yeah, Jay, we had that carp that wobbled out then, didn't we? No, it's definitely one. It's amazing, isn't it? That one little pot of bait, yeah. And there was no bait there before that, how quickly they're on that bait. I mean, it might be now we put that bait in that we get a skimmer, but we won't know, will we? Mm, I don't think we will. You not think? No, I'm feeling a carp. I think we're just going to get snarled up. I think we've you? just gone shallow enough to avoid silvers and things like that. Yeah. I mean, we've we still probably got what? We've got another, like, what, 10 inches a foot maybe? We could go even yeah, you further. Could, you could. You can go really, really shallow if you need to, can't you? And that's that's another tactic we need to talk about, Jay, isn't it? Like, ground baiting in that shallow water this time yeah, it can be devastating can't yeah. it um yeah but, right on the the curb as i call it where the where the bottom and the side meet yeah that's the best if you got that i don't feel like you've got that depth though today i feel no. like it's like too shallow there just in this this swims case it's almost too shallow further back isn't it wow that was straight on that comes straight on the drop then mate mm -hmm. they're on it now aren't they? so casters in I can't resist some casters mate Wow, little tiny, they're probably skimmers them I'd say. F1s are morphed, aren't they? A lot more quicker with their bites and what have mm -hmm. you. So I probably need to think about maybe putting a little bit more baiting over there to like proper zone them in. We won't, we won't know for a bit yet. So if it carries on wah, like we're doing, you know, getting them little dinks, and they're probably F1s them to be fair yeah, actually. I, th I think they're F1s, it'd be It'd be good to see on a camera whether the mud's puffing up when you're missing a bite, whether one's leaving your peg or not. Uh, oh. Unlucky for his rich. <laughs> so, again, just goes to prove. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a bigger pot on to see if yeah. we can try and tempt, obviously, them bigger fishing. Now, it, it's, it can be a bit of a mare sometimes, can't it? Feeding more micros. Yeah. Can because it'll bits. spread all over the place and you get the wrong kind of fish into your peg. But... If it's bigger fish, hopefully we can draw some bigger fish in, we'll just nail it in one. Yeah. So I'm going to go straight to a bigger pot. Again, we're fast forwarding everything out my day to day, yeah, just so we can show. Yeah, it's a lot quicker than what we do things. These lovely people, what we're on about. So, much bigger pot. Still going to fish um, an expander, but we're putting a lot more feed in. Now, as I said, this could potentially ruin the peg. But and you'd know within sort of two or three goals, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah, but if it, you float sometimes like this. you only need two or three goals, don't you? Then you can cut back to your little pot. Yeah. Once you've got them there, can't you? Definitely. But this is exactly what we'd be doing in matches, isn't it? Yeah. Giving them more bait to try and get the wrong fish out of the way and bring them them better, bigger size fish in. So you can see that that pot's increased, you know, dramatically. Really. Going into beast mode, aren't we, Jay? You know what I mean? <laughs> We're on them. having it. Get on to our markers. Yeah, I'm just going to sneak that in. No commotion whatsoever in that shallow water. Draw that into there. Come on. Now, hopefully, any time. Come on, it's going to go, Jay, isn't it? 
But you see again all the time, and you know, old Richie. Oi! He's on. We knew it, didn't we? Just needed that little bit more bait to draw. I don't know. It's scared. I think it's spooked a carp. Yeah, probably an F1. A carp there again, wasn't so it, it tells me, like, and again, what you ran about before, Jay. Look at the banking now. Yeah. Oh, it's colouring up. It's all staring up. Oh, it? mate. So this is when I'd be thinking about using potentially bigger baits now and changing my hook size. Like a, be a, bit, a worm head or seeing some calf to be a bit more selective. If I start seeing bigger bigger fish like that, yeah, be a lot yeah. more selective. Uh, we won't know. If we go in again and catch another F1, then I'd be happy doing what we're doing. But yeah. if it's a skimmer, that's when I'd be thinking about changing baits. Yeah. yeah what are you, you saying, Jay? What are you saying? Fish in your swim now to be selective if you need to. Definitely. And mm. that's twice now, Jay, isn't it, that we've uh, spooked a carp. Yeah. So we know they're coming into that. There's an odd one, yeah. So. On with another expander. But it's good, I'm, I'm glad it's worked out like that, that it, it proves that, you know, these the bigger fish are there, we just need to give them the bait to draw them in mm. and obviously deter the advances of them, them smaller fish. Yeah. Because uh, they'll only take a few of them pellets and they'll just get full up, won't they? Yeah, really, and you, you're going to feed them a lot, a lot quicker now with this big part, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. Mm. And I like that, I'm liking the sign that there is that carp there then. Yeah. I'm loving that day, to be fair. Oh, I'll be right in my element in the match, mate. <laughs> Tell you what. So I'll sneak that in again. Draw that up into it. And again, oh, someone wobbled it there, mate. Mm. Keep them casters it's going changed. in. Them, them last two pots have changed you your bite sort of that last go with the little pot you have a lot of them little dinks don't you like you said yeah. and you caught a skimmer oh now it's just sitting there getting an odd wobble but they're very distinctive liners rather yeah. than little skimmery dinks now i mean what what um obviously lovely viewers you've got to think about jay's these carp and f1s are feeding machines aren't they pretty much yeah well come in yeah. and they'll nail that pot in one won't they uh, like one yeah. the f1s that you've been catching they'll nail that pot in one it won't stop until it's had everything mm. and it's only going to get spooked by obviously a bigger fish coming in Oh, a oh, snag. Did you get some weed then? There's some weed on that. Right. But again, that was a carp in the peg as well, wasn't it? One, yeah. didn't we? So, right. I'd be right tempted to put uh, to put a bigger bait on. What are you saying, Jay? What are you saying? No, I'd be happy with that was going. In fact, I think I've just seen one there then. Have you? Another you know, carp there? Zooming in. The tail start waving there, Rich. Hmm? You're waving at you over there, Rich. Have another go then. So it's definitely changing. It's it, made it? such a difference, isn't it? Just swapping big pot, yeah. But if the, obviously what my way of thinking, it might be wrong. So tell me, Jay. Um, obviously I'm putting that bait in, but it's only such a small little little bait that I know it stands out. Mm. But I think they'd pick an even bigger bait, like a worm head or corn or meat or anything. Like, I think they'd pick that out a lot quicker. Maybe I think that works two different ways on the day. In what I think way? Some mate? days they yeah. avoid that. When they're being a bit moody. Because they know, obviously, a bigger bait. Big standy LC, but other days they can, as you say, they'll pick it out every time. It's Every day's a bit different with that. But, yeah, you've got to try it. You've got right. to. I always have a... I, I never don't have a tin of corn to, to whack a piece on when I'm fishing like this. And it's... I mean, obviously, we're fishing nice, positive rigs as well. And, you know, a heavy bait like corn or a worm head, it's not going to go anywhere either, is it? Yeah. When they do come in and waft it. But it's it's been... It, I'm glad it's worked so, we you know, we can see that... Going into that shallow water has made that difference. Yeah, completely changed peg, hasn't it? Yeah, not gone of them all like little dinky things. Again, there's still going to be odd skimmer there, mm. but it's just see the cart. You can see it wobbling in from the left there. You can see one coming. It's, then it's worth talking about that. It's the same down the margins, isn't it? You always think that fish coming from the deeper water Look straight in into there. your peg is the tail end. See it's behind them. They always come in from the side, actually, don't they? Yes, definitely. Always sneaking along that like crease where they get the most feed. Yeah. And you, you, see, you see that little tail coming along. If you've got your perfect trap set, oh look, he's behind me. Get there, now. stop. <laughs> there he is. He's behind me. Flow. It's going to turn around and have it. Oh, and that was it. Probably its tail, but yeah. I reckon we're going to snare him, Jay. Yeah, now he's, coming back. he's still there. So if that fish, if I'd have seen that fish bow wave or big swirl, I would have come straight back and fed it again. Uh, if you felt it, it upset oh, your pile. Yeah, but he's still there. Bait's come off, but he's still there. Stuck a bit hard, didn't I? Stuck a bit hard. Getting too giddy, uh, Jay. I can see him all swirling down yeah. the middle. Was, but I'm not going to stop until we have him. How good your expand was actually were, and then that one fell off. But Mate, now, you've got a nice. 
that, that's important as well, isn't it? Getting a good quality expander for doing this, it's dense. So important. Because if you have poor expanders at this distance when you're striking a bit, yeah. it comes off every time and you don't want that. No. I mean, to be fair, I did uh, I did win a little bit then, to be fair, Jay. But yeah. No, but it, off, I was yeah. impressed before that. It lasted three or four strikes, that. All right, mate. They're all lying. There's not fucking <laughs> bites. Come on. <laughs> I feel as if we're going to catch a cart, mate. Yes. You see him coming in, can't you? I reckon this time... So that one was behind our float that time, wasn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's sneak that in there. Yes, that's the one. Go on. You notice I've got it like dotted right low as well. I don't like having a lot of bristle on. Yeah, I like You that. can get away with it sometimes, but you need that little dink, don't you? You can read it more, can't you? With yeah. the, the lower your bristle is, the more you see. Definitely. Oh, it's coming in again, Jay. It's coming back. We're waiting for that nice, quick, quick dink out with some on my bristle. Some fluff on my bristle. Can't see it proper. But they're definitely coming in from them sides, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's great how it's changed. Still feeding them casters on, mate, aren't we? Yeah, keeping them going. I'd be getting excited on that now. That looks very, very fishy on them casters. Just looks absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, we can have a go on them, Sue. But so now we're seeing them sides. I don't know about you. Yeah. I'd, I'd be thinking about another rig again. I mean, even further back again. Just oh, like, yeah. I'd, I'd want to see a few more. In shallower water? Yeah. But the, yeah. Definitely the, the coming pack, aren't they? They're going behind your float. Even yeah. though you've not fed there. And as we said before at the start, we, we don't want to go to like uh, reeds. This is why we want bare banking. So eventually, if we need to, which it looks like we do, we need to go right back against that banking so they can't undercut us. Yeah. That's the worst thing in the world, isn't it, Joe? When it gets warm and the fish start going in that shallow water. I bet they just keep swimming until fish. they hit the bank, don't they? Yeah, definitely. But I mean, all them little indications are gone now. We're just waiting for that, that proper, mm. a proper bite, aren't we? And incidentally, it's worth mentioning that the longest uh, longest we'd wait for a bite would be what four or five minutes, and then we'd come back and refeed, wouldn't we? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, well, in, I did in this again. in this scenario, yeah, definitely. Because it's, it's pointless just sitting there float watching. Mm. You can't just sit there and float watch it. We, we say it all the time, don't we? When we're coaching. Come yeah, back, feed, make something, make something happen. Don't you? you you've only got to watch like the people on the lake around you when you're fishing. If they're not feeding. And you are, you're going to be the one catching them, not the ones who aren't feeding. Simple as that. Oh, oh he's fell off him in there. I like that. You know what I mean? Skills, Jay, skills. <laughs> Can't teach that. Can't teach that, bro. You learn, you learn all the time. Every day's a skill day, isn't it? I might have trashed me, Rick. <laughs> right, come on. I'll let you catch one more over there. Yep. And then I want to have a go on these casters. I want you no. to show me these casters. My go first, mate. Okay. My go first. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to change it up a bit. Are we still going, Rick? Still going? I'm gonna put a bigger bait on. Oh yeah, what are you gonna put on? I'm gonna put on three reds. Fish. Three reds. Might it's might catch a small mean. fish, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go tight to the bank, which will allow me to go more over depth. Mm. So they can't undercut me. Right, so maybe you push it right in. So he's right in. At us now. Right in. Right where Rich is standing. Oh look at him there. It, it just shows that I, I've argued about this a lot with skylining where people does it? Bit, it <sighs> does make one bit of difference, does it? Mate. When they're feeding, we do, when we're coaching, don't we? We're, we're like, stood yep, on top of the float. Is, is he getting it? Strike, <laughs> isn't it? It's one yeah. of them. When fish are feeding, you can literally do anything and you won't upset them, can't you? Yeah. Can I just stop there on the way out? We might get something. Yeah. Not, you, you get one <laughs> if you're not quick. <laughs> right, so I know there's a fish there. I'm not going to feed. What, because you can see what I do? Because I can see it. I'm going to go and see if I can snare this. I'm going to tuck it right in there. Yeah. See if I can snare it. A little bit over that, but the way you're pushing it in, it'll still be tight. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. See, there's somewhat there. Go on, go on, nail it. Go on. Prove me right. Need another section on. But we got it. So that's probably going to be, what, three, four inches over depth. Yeah. In fact, the upland might even be on the bottom. I was going to say, I think your bulk's just scraping above the bottom there, the way it, your float looks, doesn't it? Yeah. Right, I can't see that fish anymore, so I'm going to come back. Feed it, see it's still there. Feed it, and then we can go past where that feed is, so the fish has got to come past my, my hook bait. There to catch it. Go on. Go on. Love this style of fishing, mate, when you can see it's them. It's like quite that. exciting. This is still gets me this. When you can see them coming, you get that little tail coming towards your pot, you think, I'm having him. You can almost sort of like pick him out, can't you? <laughs> and that, that's a, oh, oh, he's spooked. Mm. So, in that instant, as I say, in one, I'm going to come back, feed it. Yeah, I, I bet Rich will be able to see there as well that when you've missed that bite, it's kicked up. I actually saw all the swell come up, so your bait's gone, hasn't it? Your pile's yeah, gone. Definitely. That's why we've got to feed it again. Got to feed it again. It was a liner though, Rich, wasn't it? It didn't actually take it. Come on. Come <laughs> on. Don't miss proper bites. Now, 
obviously as well, I'd, I'd, I'd be changing uh, changing rigs like we touched on before, Jay. Yeah. But we just want to show you people what you need to be doing in this situation. Mm. So I'm going to feed there and I'll put the rig past it. And bear in mind, I'm not on a pellet anymore. I've got a bigger bait on. Just so that fish, hopefully a carp, can pick it out. And then it's just a waiting game, basically. That's what I've gone on for a bigger bait, just so the fish can pick it out more. Mm. But, you know, it's personal preference what you used. It is. It's going to go, that, isn't it? I should have put Come my on. goggles on. Come on, I should you put, yeah. <laughs> put your goggles I on. That's a flipping thing. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, so the fish will be coming to that pile of bait and just swimming up that slope. It's going to nail it. I know there's something there. He's getting the odd liner. So it's only going to be a matter of time, surely. Come on. Come on. Is he going to nail it? Well, I feel like it's left the peg for a minute because the colour's changed to the peg a bit, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. It was all stirred up a minute ago. And again, obviously, we've fast-forwarded everything, haven't we? we? We need to... It doesn't matter if you get loads of fish in your peg, this style of fishing, does it either, Jay? No, because you, you, you can read normally it. control them, oh. yeah. Yeah, there's um, a the peg now. It's not like it, it's deeper and we can't control what's there. We can control the fish coming in and what we're catching. Yeah. Go on. Like that. So, obviously, that, that bite was a lot different, a lot slower, because we were, like, 12 foot over depth. <laughs> <laughs> but it just shows, if you, like, persevered with that... Um, I'm sure we'd end up catching a load of carp yeah, over there. Yeah, definitely. So the, the peg just needs time to develop. Definitely. But as soon as you've moved up onto both these lines, it's noticeable how different the peg is. Oh, yeah. no Well, we had one skimmer there, didn't we? Yeah, but, but lack then... of no little horrible bites, no miss bites, pretty much. No. All right, pretty much. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it, it's just the tiniest little movements further up um, allow you to change peg completely. And if you choose the wrong area of peg where you can't do that, like you said about the reeds... Yeah. You're knackered because you, you're limited to one depth and one way of fishing pretty much, depending on depth. Whereas by giving yourself options of depth, you can control, you can, the fish can dictate to you the changes you need to make and you can do so. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Okay, a lot easier, don't need to, to control the far bank. Go on. Is, it, quick is, it, is it time to go and get some casting? <laughs> <laughs> yes! Come on, let's go! 